so good to be here. And uh, it's a great privilege for me to time uh, ministry. Uh, he said that he will give me uh, families and houses and mothers and fathers and, you know, children everywhere in the world. So now we are here related. We are one family. So I have another family here. So this is beautiful. Wow. And, uh, yeah, my wife is from Azerbaijan. And she, uh, she uh, and I, we met in uh, Budapest in 2002 and then we were together in um, in Kazakhstan, and we got married there. And uh, yes, I am from Romania. I got saved in Romania, but then I was in the Bible College in Budapest under Pastor Schaller, and then I went under. I was under Pastor Mati in uh, in Kazakhstan, and then uh, I went to China, and uh, we were planting a church there. And uh, yeah, some other places under Pastor Stan in Peru. And uh, I really uh, love, love the Greater Grace Ministry because of the, the finished work, you know, and this is so beautiful. And uh, we went at Pastor uh, Ken Fires in uh, North Miami, and uh, they actually sending greetings to you. And we had beautiful time uh, these few days uh, together with the body of Christ. And we, we did a lot of soul winning and we had really great divine appointments with people on the streets and uh, in the daycare, I mean, for the homeless. And uh, this, this has been such a great trip so far, really. And um, I was thinking about prayer. Uh, there is one, uh, one brother in one of the persecuted church, and he said, uh, pray for me. Uh, I don't want you to pray that I will be released, but I want you to pray that I will be a light and I will be a testimony for our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, that's an amazing, an amazing prayer. I mean, someone said, don't pray that I will be released because he understood actually that, that he was not, uh, you know, uh, in the prison because of the government, whatever government was that, but he was thinking about himself as a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And that was also Paul, right? He called himself, I am not a prisoner of Rome, but I'm a prisoner of Christ. And I can say about us that we are prisoners of Christ because he binds us with cords of love, right? That we, he loves us. He loves us, and we don't want to run away from him. We want to be with him, and we want to walk with him, and we give our life to him because of his love for us. So, um, Father, we pray that you'll bless this portion, encourage us, minister to us. In Jesus' name, amen. In Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus is uh, with his disciples, and um, he's... Um, He's giving them a model of, of, about prayer. And um, in, verse, uh, in verse 9, he says, In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And, you know, just to think about, to think about prayer, <laughs> I heard many people praying, you know, Sometimes we pray with people who just came to Christ or, you know, maybe people who don't know God. And you see the difference, actually. You know, the people who don't know God, they're just talking to themselves. You know, uh, I wish that it will be like this and I wish luck and I wish that and I wish that. But people who know God, they, they speak to him like they speak to their father. Father, father. I want to hear from you, Father. You know, he speaks to, to God like a child. And I think this is the most beautiful thing about us. Because the Spirit of God speaks to us and gives us the testimony that you are now a child of God. You belong to God. So you can go to him like a child goes to his father. And I have a friend. And one day he told me, you know, my son was coming and he was sitting on my lap. 
And I asked him, what do you want? <laughs> and his, the son said, no, I don't want anything. I just want to be with you. You know, and the, the many times, you know, we, we don't want anything. We just want to be with him. We just want to be in his lap. We just want to feel his arms around us. We want to feel love. We want to feel that he is there with us. That we are in his presence. So Jesus is like, you know, telling the disciples, you, you call him father. You can call him father. And we, we can do that. And it's, no, you know, no one can tell us don't call him father. Because he says, you are my children. And he gives that assurance in our heart. So it, that's, it's so beautiful. You know, when I understood that God is my father, when we understand that God is our father, a small, a small request, it's not a small request anymore. Because Jesus said, when you ask, ask like a child. A child, what he is, he is asking his father, and he believes that his father will give it to him, will bring it to him, because his father loves him. And he is waiting that, that request. And, I, you know, I love that there was, a, there was a joke. I mean, not a joke, but it was something very real in uh, what happened in the communism. Because uh, a communist teacher, he came to the school and he was telling children, look, I will prove you that there is no God. So he said, look, ask God to give you chocolate. And they were asking, God, give us chocolate. And, you know, they were waiting, waiting. And he said, oh, did God answer? And they said, no. And now ask me to give you chocolate. And they, they asked him, can you give us chocolate? And he gave the, ch the chocolate. And the one boy said, look, but God answered our prayer. He said, how? God used you to give us chocolate, <laughs> you know? You know, and it's, it's like, how do I, do I see God answer? Because a person, you know, can pray and can pray, and, but he doesn't see God answering. And sometimes, you know, the Bible says that when we pray, we pray amiss to use it in our flesh for our desire. And I, I love that our Father, he, he gives us, he answered to us. But he's not like Santa Claus, right? <laughs> he's not like, how do you call that, sugar papa or something? <laughs> you know, like, sugar, daddy. Oh, how sugar, sugar, daddy. sugar yeah. <laughs> I, it's not, you know, it's not, it's not like that. He's, he, he, he knows exactly what I need, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he, if he, he looks at me and he knows that that thing is there, I don't need it. He said, you know what? It's not the time. You don't need that right now. Or you don't need that. It's not what you need. Or he says, look, I am give it to you. So we have the answer from the Father. Yes, no, or wait. And when we have the relationship with the Father, I know. I know what's the answer. You know, it's like I pray. And many times, many times I know God says yes or no or wait. I know that. It's like and sometimes it takes a little bit of time to understand that. Maybe I pray several times and then God says yes. And then I know that God said yes, but I want you to continue pray. And many times we continue pray because of the spiritual warfare. And it's not that God is, you know, he's limited by the devil or limited by people or, you know, by situation. No, it's not like that. But God wants to teach us to trust him and to help us grow in our relationship with him. Because, you know, he has all things, right? All things belong to him. He has all the power. He has all the authority. And then he made Everything possible for us that there will be nothing between us and him. That's why the cross, that's why Jesus came 
and he died for us and he paid for our sin that there will be nothing in between us and the father and not only that but he gave us the holy spirit and that's why god is telling us when you pray pray through the spirit and not not only that but god says i want you to pray through the word of god to pray according with god's will because when i know god's word then i know god's will for my life then i know how to pray what to ask to be according with his will to use for god's plan in my life so i can pray oh do i need a red car or do i need a big house or do i need this i i, I mean i would love to have them why not you know not a red car i'm sorry <laughs> just <laughs> but think about this you know <laughs> you know, remember, we know God because of his word. We know his heart. And then when I know his heart, I know his plan for my life. And God's plan for my life is the best. I can trust him. And I can walk with him. And I can walk in that what he prepared for me. Because he says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that we are his workmanship, right? He work in us. And he prepared good works for us that we can, we can walk in them through the Holy Spirit. So that's why my walk with the Holy Spirit, my connection with the Holy Spirit through the word of God. It's very important in my relationship to the Father. Like Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but through me. And he said, no one comes to me, said Jesus, but if the Father drawn him. And then, you know, the Holy Spirit is there with us to tell us, hey, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And he gives us, you know, he explained to us. He gives us the word of God. He gives us like personal, personal promises from God, from the word. That's what we need every day. Like Jesus, he, he learned obedience by the things what he suffered. He learned to depend on the Father 100%. Even he was God. He says in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, that he, he emptied himself. You know, he, he humbled himself. And he became a man. And he depended on the Father. And he was led by the Spirit. And he went and he prayed. And it was the time when he was weak. And he said, Father, remove this cup from me. He said, Father, not my will, but your will. He was weak sometimes, you know. And he needed the Father to strengthen him. When he went into the wilderness, he says he was led into, wild, into the wilderness by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. For 40 days, 40 nights, he was there, but he was in a connection with the Father. And he was tempted, and he was hungry, and he was thirsty, and the tempter came. But his connection with the Father was with the word of God. And he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. That's why it's important for us to have the word of God richly. To dwell richly into our hearts. Colossians 3, 16. It's important for us to have the word of God. And to be led by the spirit. And then Ephesians chapter 5. I think verse 18, 19. You know, do not be, uh, do not be filled drunk with wine. But be filled with the spirit. We pray in the spirit. We are filled with the spirit of God. And I know who is my father. And I know that I can trust him. And I know that I can, you know, walk with him. And he will provide for me everything what I need. You know, Jesus, he never promised to us that we will have a perfect life. I mean, without tribulation. He said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. You are sons and daughters of God. And you'll have tribulations in this world. Because this world... It's under the authority of, of the enemy, the devil. And you are in this world, and this world is not yours. You don't belong to this world. You are only travelers in this world. And that's why 
I need to know my father. I need to have this connection with him. I need to hear from him every day. That's why we need the church. That's why I need the pastor teacher. That's why we need brothers and sisters to encourage us, to pray for us. You know, everything, the church, the word of God, it's, you know, it's God's provision for us as we are here in this world. That we can know him and everything what is coming in our life has a purpose and there is a provision for us. You know, like many times when something is happening, you know, I have a pretty like big list in my phone. Friends, relatives, when something happens, I start to call, you know. And then no one can help me. And then, okay, God, <laughs> how about go first to him? He might use people, you know, right? He might use a relative or he might use someone I don't know. And believe me, I, <laughs> I know <laughs> when we went to Moldova first time with my wife, we didn't have money. We just had our luggages with us and we had no place to stay. And we knew one person and this, I mean, we didn't know the person. We just had the phone number from someone and we call and they say, hey, we need a place to stay. Can you help us? And they say, just call us in the evening, nine o'clock. We were like, okay. We were all day in the park, preaching the gospel, singing and eating whatever we had, you know, with us. And then the person, you know, call us nine o'clock in the evening. Oh, we have a place for you for three days. And then God provided for us a place, provided the money for the apartment. And then we were there for four and a half years. And God planted the church there and God brought disciples and brought people and, you know, God says, I, I have it. You belong to me. I'm your father. Don't be afraid. Because I know what your needs are. You know, from the moment you put your trust in me. And you know, our salvation is not only salvation from hell. But it's his salvation. He's saving us every day. Right? Every day he keeps us in his hands and there will be the ultimate salvation when we will be transformed. You know, there will be, you know, the transformation that will be like him. There will be glorification of our mortal bodies and we will be forever with him. But right now, every day, he is saving us. He is keeping us. You know, we, we don't think that we, we are so good with security and everything else, you know, like driving and, you know, like I, I believe that there will be a time in heaven and God will show us how many times he saved us. How many times he healed us, we, he, we even didn't know. And this is beautiful because we learn to trust him. We learn to look at him. We learn to walk with him. And to depend on him. Like a son depending on his father. And you know then. We also. You know we, we teach others about this. I, I love that. You know when you have new disciples. And they. <laughs> they depending on you. You know like to. to them and you know they, they calling you. And they say hey, I, I'm, I'm so discouraged today. Can you. Can you help me? You know, and it's, it's beautiful to do that. But then, at, after a while, you know, they get to learn about the Father. They see, actually, the, the need they have for the Father. Pastor Julian, Pastor Chuck, they are just men. Weak, like them. And I, I love one of my friends said, you know what? I love to leave my door open when we have trouble that my children will see us and hear us praying as we go to the Father to ask for help. I'm not protecting them from that, showing them that we, we don't have it, but we have a Father who is helping us and I think this is what we need to learn. 
that, Lord, I need you in every area of my life. I need you in my finances, my work, my family, my marriage, everything. I need you because I cannot do it. I cannot do it. We need him in our mission, right? He brings the people. He touches the souls. He saves people. You know, when I went to Peru, I had such a confidence, you know. I didn't speak the language, but I, lo I love evangelism. And this is my, pri I, I lo I, you know, this is my primary gift. I, I love to evangelize. And it's, it's really, uh, it's like what I love the most to do, you know, fishing for men, <laughs> for people. And, you know, I, I went and I just like, you know, people getting saved. And I'm thinking, oh, I don't think it's real, I said. I think it's just emotional, I said. And they said, show me, God. Show me that if it's real or not. And then for a few days, I had just people rejecting me. <laughs> I said, what's happening, you know? And, and God said, you know, I'm doing this. You are just a tool in my hands. I want to use you. And I said, okay, I understood. And I said, let's go. Let's go for the harvest. I want the harvest. You know, and it's so beautiful. When, when I ask, you know, like that's how the, the maturity, you know, like you have a child and, you know, he's eating and he doesn't want to share with anyone. But when he starts to love others, you know, like he, he wants to share with others, right? And I... I ask, but I'm not asking for myself. I ask for others. Lord, I, I want my neighbor to be saved. Lord, I want my neighbor to know you. I want my brother, my, my sister. And I, I, I think uh, George Mueller, I think he prayed for over 50 years for someone. He had a list of people. He prayed for them. And I think all of them got saved. Some of them even after 50-something years. And he, he never took like a request for granted. And I, I remember I heard this story about that he had a little girl coming to him and said, Mr. Mueller, I, I would love to, you to ask something for me from God. And he said, what do you want? He said, I want a multicolored ball. You know, I want to, to play with some. I never had something like that. Is it right? I said, right. And then, and then he, he asked her, okay, uh, when do you want this? She said, in three days. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then, you know, he's praying, and then he said, Lord, this is, you know, I told her that in three days she'll have the ball, you know. So please, do something with that. So in three days, someone came and brought food, and then he said, look, I, I don't know why I bring this. There are so many children here, but I had in my heart to bring this you know, multicolor <laughs> ball. And, you know, she, she, he gave it to the girl. You know, it's like even the smallest thing, God cares. God wants us, you know, and he loves us. And there is nothing what will stop him to love us, but he wants us to trust him. And I love that, you know, like, 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 uh, how do you say that, childlike faith. Lord, I, I, I believe, Lord. I know that you can do it, you know. And it's, it's like we talk to him like to we talk to a father. And we can expect from him. And, you know, there is no, there is no like, oh, you didn't give it to me. Because he, he comforts me and he loves me. And he tells me. You know, hey, this is, this is what you need. This is what I want to give it to you. And, you know, like he comes and he speaks to us. Even when we pray, he speaks to us and he corrects us in love. And I think this is so beautiful when he comes and he washes us. And I like that, you know, when, when, when a father or a mother corrects the child, and they correct the child. They say, look, this was wrong. And I have to correct you. Because there is 
you know, consequence for sin. But then, after the correction, you know, the mother or the father embraces the child and loves him up. And that's how our father does with us. And I can, you know, if I am in trouble, I'm not running away from him. But I'm running to him. I'm running to him. I'm running to the throne of grace to receive grace and mercy for the time of need. Because he is my father. If I'm in trouble, I'm running to him. If I am tempted, if I am attacked by the enemy, I'm running to him. I'm not running from him, but I'm running to him. Because I learn his heart. I know his heart. And I think this is the most beautiful thing to learn, you know, to run to the Father and to be able to ask anything from him and to speak anything with him. Do you know how, like, some, some people, or I, I, you know, they, they cannot ask, forgive me. They cannot ask, forgive me. They will bring flowers, they will bring a chocolate or something, but they cannot ask, forgive me. And they, you know, going around and start to do things, you know, cutting the grass for the neighbor or, you know, bringing money to the church or something, doing good works. And the father said, hey, but you need to talk to me. You need to talk to me. You need to speak to me because it's important that something there, there is something there which bothers you and you have to talk to me because I'm your father and I can forgive you and I can clean you and I can set you free from that little thing which becomes so big. And you know how many marriages are like that? The husband and the wife, they staying together, but they don't forgive each other and they don't talk to each other. Why? Because first, they cannot talk to their father. Brothers in the church, you know, living like that. How many people living like that? I know that my father forgives me. I know I can speak to him anything. And I know that he can forgive me. And I know that he will understand me. Yes, I, he might correct me, right? He might discipline me. But he will do it with love. And he will change me into the image of his son. And there, you know, this is so, so, so glorious. That we are not, we are not afraid of him. Because he didn't give us the spirit of fear, right? He gave us the spirit of love, power, and sound mind. How do I know God? I know God from the word of God. Doctrine means to know how to think with God. How to think about God. I, to think about God in categories. I know who he is. And because I know who he is, I'm not afraid of him. Yes, I, I have reverence for him, right? I, and I have respect, but I'm not afraid of him. And I'm not afraid, you know, thinking about my past or what I did, or maybe, you know, something is there in my life, and I try to hide it. Like I, you know, we, we have a room. <laughs> Pastor Shara was talking about the, someone had in the attic, and they found like bad things there, bad things, you know, someone was hiding something. And we have like that, we can hide things in our heart. But can I hide anything from my father? And it can be like a dark place. It can be like a handle for the enemy to tell me, look, no one can help you with that. You'll never be delivered from that. And the father said, just bring it to me. Just open the door. Let me light into that place. Let me come and clean it. Let me come and commune with you and speak to you. But Lord, it's like, go away from me because I'm a sinner. And God says, no, 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 no. I will make you fisher of men. I, I will make you something beautiful because you are my son and I paid for you. I paid for your sin, and I want to bring you into my kingdom. I want to bring you into my house, that you will be my, my heir. 
I'm not ashamed with you. I, you know, I, I am proud of you, actually. And when I look at you, I see you in Christ. I see you perfect, without sin, without, you know, without any blemish. I want you to trust me. I saved you because you asked me to. I, I wanted to save you. I just, I couldn't wait that you will say those words, Lord, save me. And that's how our father is. He's not afraid of, uh, I mean, of our sin. Or like he, he put everything on Christ. That's why there is nothing, nothing. Just, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. Lord, I need you. Fill me. Teach me. And that's how we do. That's how we walk with him. And that's how we know him as a father. Yeah, our heavenly father, we thank you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you that you are teaching us, Lord, how to trust you, how, how to come to you, Lord, without fear, without shame, without guilt, Lord. That we can come to you to receive from you, Lord, to know you in a personal way. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you. Fill us, Lord, with your spirit, Lord. Lord, let your word dwell in our heart richly, Lord. That we can walk according with your, with your word in the new heart, in the new man, Lord, in the new creation. To be an example for others, Lord. To bring others to the throne of grace. Just continue to bless this church, Lord. And like, Lord, we pray for increase here, Lord. We pray for maturity, Lord. We pray for anointing. Thank you, Father. We pray for healing, Lord, for whoever needs healing here, Lord. Touch, Lord, and minister. You know exactly, Lord, everyone here, Lord. Please, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Mm.